Well, Vince, are you ready for rapid fire? I'm ready for rapid fire. One of these questions, though, I don't have an answer to yet. And I know you're going to have an amazing answer to it. And I have been racking my brain Man. trying to come up with it. And I have not come up with a good one. So all right, it'll be interesting. Well, I'll see if my answer meets your expectations. Okay. I don't, I don't know which question it is. Fill in the blank. The most intriguing player on Notre Dame's roster is blank. I'm sorry. I got to go with the canned answer. It's CJ Carr. He's the most intriguing player to me. And he's not even going to play. Uh, <laughs> so that is probably one of the worst answers possible. But he's still the one that I'm going to be watching the second I walk into practice. Where's number 12? I want to watch him throw the football. Yep. Uh, so he's the most intriguing to me. Now, if we spin this so, towards... And I guess he'll kind of be the most intriguing until and if we actually get to see him on the field yes. in a regular season game, right? Absolutely. <laughs> And so I will spin it now towards players that are actually going to play. Okay, good. Right? Good. Because that's probably more what you were looking for. Yes. Um, the, mo the most intriguing, intriguing, let's get, okay, so there's a difference. There's intriguing, like, storylines. So, like, uh, competitions, you know, things like that. So I'm staying away from that. Uh, so just the player himself, I am going to go with, I know, Salty wants me to say great house, I'm sure. I'm, I, you know what? I'm intrigued with Drake Bowen and what he ends up doing at middle linebacker because we know what J.D. Bertrand did, and he was basically a coach on the field, and that defense operated the way it did because of J.D. Bertrand. That's Those are massive shoes to fill in Al Golden's defense. So I'm very intrigued to watch Drake Bowen and see how he handles being the middle linebacker in this defense on this team specifically so i'm going to go with drake bowen okay that's a good one as well and we we got a late mailbag question in and, and we'll nice. we'll follow this question with that because i think it's a pretty good question where were you like 15 <laughs> minutes ago <laughs> i wasn't thinking about cj Carr, but you're probably right maybe he's the most intriguing or he's at the very least the guy that people are most interested in, I guess, <laughs> at this point after the it's the, know, the shiny new toy effect. Yeah. I mean, and and he's really, really talented. I mean, those so he I, I'm always gonna be looking for number 12 when I walk in. Always. I'm gonna go with Bubakar Traori. Nice though. He is my most intriguing guy because of what specifically is going on at that Viper end position. They they have to figure out they've got to get more production out of that Viper end than then what you know then then what they got last year basically you know but you know we're still waiting for Batello we didn't see any like we saw you know, maybe a couple of hints from Batello between the jersey scrimmage and the blue gold game that's something there we really didn't see the rise from junior Tui Alamaka but we did see big flashes from Bubakar and is yeah. that actually going to translate into something in the fall that's so that's what makes him the most intriguing to me because that is a position of great need and if he can step up and help fill that void who knows maybe even you know kind of take it over by the time things are all said and done that's what makes him the most intriguing like to me right now i like it okay so now, before we get to that, yes, USMA 87 nominated Bo Collins. I think that's a good one as well. That is a good we one. We don't get to see him. Yeah. We so don't that know. makes him very intriguing. There's a great shroud of mystery Ooh. in terms of how Bo Collins shroud is going to fit of into that. I like it. <laughs> yes. Because it's true, though, because yeah. we have, we've seen him at Clemson. And obviously, this isn't Clemson. And so what is he going to look like at Notre Dame? What's, what's that going to look like? Um, and yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's a really good one, actually. I think so as well. And then Craig D said, love the intrigue for Jeremiah love. And I think, you know, yeah. maybe the intrigue is, it, you know, I don't want to speak for Craig, but I mean, there's at least some intrigue there in terms of, okay, we've seen, we've seen guys dabble with sort of doing different things in the spring that doesn't always translate to the season as well, but he's going to be really, really be, good. Like, yeah. The only reason it's not intriguing to me is because I feel like I know how good he's going to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that it's like, I just know. 
uh, and watch he'll be a dud. But I feel like he's going to be very, very good. So it's not like I have a whole lot of question marks about him. Right. Okay, so the question Carlos had, he says, so I know we're over scholarships that are being said. Could Notre Dame do something like Miami did and put kids like Bowen and Faison on their respective sports scholarship books? Now, I can't speak to – I haven't heard that Miami did this. It's you know, illegal, I'm pretty sure. Right, like you can't do it for one. But you're like right. it, there, there are a couple different pieces to this. Like Faison, remember – was a walk-on with the football team and on scholarship with lacrosse last fall. But as soon as Faison took one snap in an actual football game, the football team had to put him on, right. on football scholarship. And the reason is, like you just said, it's, it's against the rules because yeah. you're basically trying to hide you yes. know, a football player with a scholarship from a different team you know, on a different team you know, on your, your campus and you can't do that. And in both of these sports specifically, baseball and lacrosse, those are both partial scholarships. So yeah. you like you can't, you know, so that's, that's another reason that you can't do it because they wouldn't even be getting full scholarships if they were, you know, on scholarship for those teams. And as you well, said, it's yeah. against the rules. So I don't know exactly what he's referring to with Miami, but maybe they're bringing guys in the door who are playing two different sports and they might ultimately end up on a football scholarship, but they're, you know, giving them the, these scholarships with these other sports right. to begin with. But essentially as soon as you play football, because it's a right. full scholarship, then you have to be on a football scholarship. Can you imagine what some schools would do? They would have like a, uh, I'm just putting out randomness, but like a, a men's field hockey team and they would just load it up with a bunch of football players so that they could have, you know, 110 guys on on scholarship, but then just use the field hockey team on the football team. You know what I mean? Like there, there would be they would be hiding. There would be schools that would be hiding players all over the place in right. all of these random. It lets you cheat the 85 man scholarship yes. limit is what Absolutely. it does. Hundred percent. If you did that, and that's like why sudden, as soon as you play football, yeah. you have to be on a football scholarship. Yes. All of a sudden, teams would have rowing teams, and they would have all these different things, and hey. Look at these two sport athletes, you know, on the rowing scholarship. But he also happens to be a five star quarterback, or so you know, it would be ridiculous, is what it would be. And so, okay, so uh, Carlos is going back. He says back in the day, he was talking about the Miami thirty for thirty. Well, again, I don't know what I don't know when, when the, the rule, rule changed, place, yeah. but it's a rule now that you can't you can't do that. And that's right. the reason. You know, Miami might be the reason why. You know, they that's they true. Ultimately, I didn't even know it was a rule it, until the phase on thing occurred to be honest with you that, yeah see now i yeah. didn't realize that like you know the minute you play right you know, one down you have to change but like from a lacrosse like i can speak to you know having you know been there when you know like jeff samarja and eric moss like people forget about right. eric moss remember the notre dame he was a punter and he was also a pitcher for the baseball team golden tate you know all those different guys like that like the baseball team you know like they like that because that's like one guy that they don't have to worry because they only have 11.7 scholarships. Right. That's the guy they don't have to worry about. They've got, he's on a full scholarship oh, yes. with a different sport. And that means that they can yes. go out and bring in another player and give somebody else some scholarship money because they don't have to worry about that football player because you know, he's got everything taken care of. Oh, it's totally beneficial to it. it totally beneficial to these other, other sports, you know, totally beneficial. But when there's conflicts, Football is going to win. I mean, that that's, you know what I mean? So that's just, it's just how it is. Just how it is. Right. But, but it's a good, it's a good question though, Carlos, just because I think that there probably is some misconception, like for some people, you know, cause like, because, you know, again, like everyone's worried about, well, how are you going to get around the scholarship limit and all that kind of stuff? Well, can't you just put these guys back on the scholarship with their other sports? You can't do that. Because right. and that's the specific reason why is so that fo the football team doesn't try to right finagle its way around the eighty five man limit by stashing guys on scholarship on other sports. Just saw on Twitter Bryce, Bryce McPherson committed to Maryland. Okay, didn't see that one coming. I think I might have heard like some people talking about he might be headed out. Okay, or something. It's about a half hour ago he put it out there. Interesting. Okay. 
be curious to see if, you know, if he's got, you know, like big fat endorsements. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> As the 100%. Punter. Like what's 100%. going on with that? Uh, so Ball Peen Shillelagh says, curious if less players transferring in the portal will affect Freeman's ability to add guys to fill talent holes in the roster. He says, though, I love guys staying great culture. So what do you think about that? Like, could do you think that that could be affected, those needs that they do need to address? Or do you think that he, he basically, you know, sort of still finds ways yeah. to get that done? Uh, the short answer is no, I don't. Because if he finds somebody that he really wants to bring in that's going to make his roster better, he'll figure out a way to bring him in and make his roster better. Uh, you know, again, whether that's just letting a guy know, hey, it's time to transfer or we're letting a guy know, hey, it's time to go on medical scholarship or just saying we don't have a scholarship for you anymore. I mean, and that's a crappy conversation to have with a kid. But at the end of the day, it is Marcus Freeman's responsibility to have the best roster he can put together. And he will, you yeah. know, and whether that means he has to have a tough conversation with a kid or not. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, there are going to be some it. conversations where he's probably just going to have to flat out say, right. look, if you want to play football, it's not going to stay here. If you stay here, we're going to, you know, we honor your scholarship because that's what they'll do, but it's not going to be on the football team like right. that, that kind of thing. And whether it's medical or otherwise that, you know, the, the conversations do get tougher when guys decide to stay. I mean, you love the fact that guys want to stay and, you know, be with the team and, and, you know, fight for spots, you know, yeah. like starting spots and depth chart and, and whatever else. But the bottom line is there are needs that they've got to address and they're, they're going to have to have some tough conversations now yeah. to make that happen because yeah. they're, they're still going to have to feel the football team. Yeah. <laughs> right. And again, at the end of the day, that's his responsibility, right? I mean, he, he has to feel the best possible team that he possibly can. And that's, Sometimes that means having some tough conversations with people. Chief Brody says, why do they want to stay so bad? Why do they want to stay on the roster? I mean, he just, I mean, why Notre do they Dame, want to stay yeah, so bad? Notre Dame question. degree. Uh, you know, maybe they love their team. You yeah. Know? And that's, like, I was just going to say the same thing. I mean, look, people are on teams and they form relationships with their teammates and their coaches and their professors and friends on campus. And sometimes it's not just all about football. You know, and you got a scholarship to play at Notre Dame. If they're going to keep giving it to you, take it. You know, I that that I have no problem with guys that want to stick around. None whatsoever. No. You know, and I hope it works out for them. Some of it might not, but some of them might. So, Vince, we recently talked about Newt Rockney's first home in South Bend being being moved to make way for new housing that was being built. Well, over the weekend, Newt Rockney was literally moved. <laughs> exhumed. He was exhumed at Highland Cemetery. He, his wife, and his son and grandsons were all exhumed and reburied in the cemetery over at Notre Dame. So I'm curious. We didn't get a chance to talk about this. What do you think about this? First of all, I had no idea that this happened until it already happened when it got like hit yeah. social media or whatever. I guess they no closed idea. down the cemetery on Sunday and like you couldn't get in yeah. or out or any of that. Crazy. Stuff. Absolute yeah. craziness. Uh I look, I think it makes a lot of sense. Obviously, Newt Rockney is a very important figure in Notre Dame history and, and the foundation of Notre Dame football and all of those different things. By moving him and obviously his loved ones to Notre Dame, you ensure the fact that nothing's ever going to happen to their graves and to, you know, their coffins and bodies and all of that stuff. You can't really make that claim at just a random cemetery in South Bend because you just never know. Maybe it gets bulldozed over. Maybe, you know, maybe all this good stuff, different stuff can happen. I mean, they moved his house for new housing, for goodness sakes. Right. What's to stop people from moving him? And so <laughs> I think putting him at Notre Dame at least ensures everything is going to be fine and he has a final resting place that is – safe forever had you ever been out to highland cemetery to see his yep. his grave or anything i had never like within a year or two after i moved here um someone who i worked with who was a notre dame alum you know was like hey, i know where newt, newt rockney is buried so we went out there one day 
because it wasn't far from the radio station that I worked at. It was only okay. a couple miles oh, okay. away. It's that way. Okay. And it was literally, you know, like Highland Cemetery. It's like you kind of go in and then, you know, me, you kind of like maybe veered to the left. You didn't have to go far. And it was literally, you know, how cemeteries are with, you know, the streets and, and you sure. know, like the little, the roads are relatively narrow, but it literally sat kind of on this corner and there was a big headstone there, you know, Newt Rockney. Okay. In the whole thing, but it was just like right there, you know. So it was very accessible, which yeah. you know I always thought was was kind of cool. It's like if anyone knew, you know. And the, a few years later, a friend of mine came to town, and we went out there and we, you know, checked it out and all that kind of stuff. But I guess That's I cool. did see. I think the granddaughter said, you know, like people were putting cigars out on the headstone and just, you know, like not the kind of stuff that you would want, you know, sure. to see done. You know, so I think they definitely feel like it'll be they'll all be more secure and better taken care of at right. Notre Dame Good than call. out at Highland Cemetery. You know, so Good call. But it was it was very interesting. Like like you said, I had no idea this was happening until nope. after some of the stories started popping up over the weekend. Right. That it happened. Yeah. Makes sense though. And his like you remember his uh his plane went down where, you know, he, he, he died in Kansas and that was That's not, right. it was only like a, like an hour, hour and a half, I think from, from where I lived in Kansas out there. So it wasn't very far away, but so it's your fault. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Cause in 19, you know, the 1930s, <laughs> I'm the one who yep. sent the, the gangsters, the mobsters. It's your, it's your fault. It. It's your fault. Right. Fill in the blank. If you could change any rule in sports, it would be blank. Is this the one you're struggling? This is the with? one. I like. This is too so broad of a question because there's so many sporting events that I'm sure there's a million that bother me in the moment. But like, I my brain doesn't work that way. Like, I can't like narrow it down. That's my problem. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would, and it's not even a rule. But like, I want the Super Bowl to start at three. You know what I mean? Like, those are the things that I want to occur. I want college football's national championship to not be on a Monday. You know, I, I couldn't come up with any rules. What, what do you got? I'm, I, I like know both you got of those. I, you know, like the start times, are like, are they technically rules? No. <laughs> no. They're not all. rules. But I would, you know, like I would go for both of those, actually. Maybe even what over, over what I'm gonna say like joe says super bowl on a saturday i wouldn't mind seeing that because then you got sunday and you don't have yeah. to worry about going to work the next day and all that different kind of stuff um mine is the targeting rule in college football. oh yeah it's I terrible it. terrible I targeting rule and i, I still want to change i just i i just i, I my thing is First, you know, like if you're going to throw a flag for targeting, first incident, just make it a 15-yard standard personal foul. If they do it a second time at a game, then you can eject. I just, right. I've, I've just always thought that there's way too much subjectivity yes. involved in this targeting because, even, like, the guys on the field and the, the the people in the booth, I think that they they all just apply their own opinions to whether or not they actually think it is. And it's just, there's so much gray area yeah. involved that I don't think a person, a guy should be ejected on the first instance in the game. Do it on the second. I like it. Not the first. I'm on, I'm on board. I will second the motion on that. They need to revamp the entire replay system in college football too. Yeah. The, the NFL replay system. That's a good one actually sense. too. Yep. You know what just I mean? Go to that. Just go the to the NFL, NFL rule. I don't understand why college sticks with. so convoluted. In college, I don't understand what's reviewable, what's not reviewable. When can a coach challenge? When they cannot, it makes no sense to me. So they need to revamp. They just need to go to, you don't even need to revamp it. College rule, gone. NFL rule in college. Yep. I'll even spring for the red hanky. Like, That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. I love it. John says uh, he does not like the runner at second base in extra oh, innings. Hate it. Hate it. I don't, I like, don't it. like it either, but I understand. Yeah. I understand why baseball is doing it. That, basically, they need to expand the rosters, is what they need. To yeah. Do. Because, the, you know, yes. the reason they're doing it is because they want to, you know, they don't want these marathon games because they don't want to burn out all the pitching sure. in sure. an 18, you know, 15 or 18 inning game 
or whatever it happens to be. So they're just trying to get it over quicker. I will say there is a lot more action, you know, that tends to happen <laughs> in extra. It's kind of ironic. You you almost have more action in extra innings these days than sometimes you have in the game. But the game has become so bullpen reliant that that's why they've done it. Like, like I said, just expand the rosters. But I agree. Like I've I've always thought it's it's obviously like a very little league thing to do. And yeah, like I don't the fact like that it. You're doing it at a major league game. I don't like it either. And I knew I wouldn't like like the big ass bases that they use now. But like I've gotten used to it. I guess I. <sighs> I, I I still I still think it looks goofy. I still think it looks like senior softball. Or it's something funny like because I haven't really like I don't even notice it that much. The size of the bases out there. I noticed it more when it first happened, and now it's kind of just blending in. And so, I guess it is what it is. Yeah. Joe wants him to go back to sudden death in football. First team who wins scores. Well, I mean, those were fun to be able to say sudden death overtime. Sure. But sure. they're not going backwards now because they, you know, everyone fought tooth and nail to make sure that both teams. Hey, everybody get gets a chance. Everybody yeah. gets a chance. <laughs> that's that. That's kind of a par. That's on par with like the everybody gets a trophy rule, man. Like everybody gets to touch the football. I I don't know. I, I I tend to agree with going back to first one wins. DK says football should get penalty boxes <laughs> to fight. Now that would make things interesting. Yes, it would. They have to keep their helmet on. My favorite is when football players get in a fight and they start punching each other in the helmet. Yeah, I know. So you stupid. Just, it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? Tommy says you're missing my most superly important mailbag. Oh, you're gonna have to resubmit, Tommy, because I'm not sure exactly uh, missed what it. it is. Missed I brought it your stuff up before, man. Somehow you made a good point earlier. I brought it up, but I didn't see a question. Yeah, sorry, man. I was just looking. Still haven't got that response from uh, from Jesse, by the way. I, I do see that he's Ooh. got his uh, notifications silenced. So, Oh, I point of order. When somebody's got their notifications silent and it says, you know, do you want to notify anyway? Every time. I want to notify anyway. <laughs> Every time. Don't give me the option. Don't give me the option if you don't want me to do it. That's I right. will notify you every time. That's right. Because when I'm sending a text, I want an answer. All right. <laughs> I want an answer. If I, I didn't want to, if I didn't want an immediate answer, I'd send you an email. Yep. John says Jesse's sleeping. He might be. He might be taking a nap <clears throat> yeah. right now. I don't know. Probably getting ready for a big night out. Of He's the actually night. been doing some some work for me this week, so I can't oh. give him too much of a hard time. Interesting. So, yeah. So Ryan Sandberg is going to be the fifth Chicago Cub to get a statue outside Wrigley Field. You good with that? I am so good with that. I think that's long overdue, to be honest with you. I don't know <clears throat> what spurned the fact that they want to do this now. I don't know if it's his cancer scare or you know, whatever the case may be, but I think it's long overdue. He's one of the great players in Cubs history. Um, I almost said that, you know, well, for the next question, I'll, I'll get back to it. But like okay. for this one, I think Ryan Sandberg absolutely deserves uh, a statue out front. Absolutely, that that's my Ryan Sandberg bat right there. It's on every show. Is it signed by Ryan? Right. Yeah, man. I don't think I realized that. Yep, it was when. Uh, so I got this bat, and it's got etched into it like all of his career highlights and like you know his MVP and all that, and it's got uh -huh. you know a fake signature that's emblazoned into the wood. Well, back when he was coaching. He was coaching the single-A Peoria Chiefs. They came to town to play the single-A. I think they were the Silver Hawks at the time. I, yeah. Obviously, they were not the South End Cubs. And I took my bat with me, and I was able to get it actually signed. So he actually signed it right above the wood etching signature. And one of my players made me a uh, thing to hold it up on the wall in wood shop. And so it's been hanging on my wall ever since. Love it. There's Love your story. It. So he's going to be the fifth. Ernie Banks, yep. Billy Williams, Ron Santo, Ferguson Jenkins, Harry Carey all have statues currently at Wrigley Field. I think he fits right into that group. I think so as lore, well. You know, and they the built lore. that new yeah. area yeah. outside on the left field side. So I don't know exactly where they're going to put it, but it seems like you got a chance to kind of put, you know, like more statues yeah. out there. Absolutely. And stuff like that. So my next question is speaking of next day and i so i i love it as well i mean like of all the guys who i think that you would put a statue out there of yes. like like ron like ryan sandberg makes 
the most since. Yes. Sosa obviously would have at one point, but that obviously changed about 20 years ago. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and he has a chance. I believe they're kind of making up at the moment. It sounds like he's going to be coming back at some point. So, you know, maybe he can kind of get his good graces back, but I don't know if it's going to be enough for a statue. Yeah, I think he'll have a tough time. Yeah. At you. Yeah. I mean, I think they can honor him at the stadium, you know, that kind yeah. of like come back at the standing O, you know, all of those different things. But I think he's a far cry away from getting a statue. Uh, but I would not be upset about a Sammy Sosa statue. I really wouldn't be. Here's my question, though. This is a tough one. They just won a world championship <clears throat> and breaking up, you know, century old drought yeah. Yeah, in they did. 2016. So does someone from that team need a statue at Wrigley Field? No, they don't. I don't see, I don't know who you would, I don't know who it would be. I really don't because it was kind of a, it was a very team oriented world series. There was different heroes on different nights and, you know, different things like that. And frankly, nobody was on that team long enough. To get a statue. And that's the problem. Cal Hendricks right. is the only guy who is right. even still left from that team, which is amazing that it was only eight years ago, and that's all I that's know. left right now. But And I wouldn't make go it ahead. him. I'm just yeah. saying, you're, you're, to, to your point, he is the most long, he is the longest tenured guy. He doesn't deserve a statue. Out does front. Joe Madden, like, because he's the manager sure. who brought it home, does Joe Madden, does, or like, does, does uh, Theo... You know Does what I would Theo deserve a statue? You know what I would do? Well, no, because he went back to the Red Sox. Uh, <laughs> but the problem with all of those guys is like even like even Madden is gone. You know, I guess is my point. Yeah, you know, exactly. like nobody is around from that team. What I would do, because it's an iconic uh picture, if you're a Cubs fan, is the the kind of mob on the mound after they won the you know game seven and all that, and they're right. all the whole team is standing. Because it wasn't like an on-the-ground mob. They're all standing you know, with all their backs, you know, and they're all right. Do a statue of that with the whole team right there. That I could get on board with to commemorate the World Series. That wouldn't be bad. But that's kind of like goes against your everyone gets a trophy thing, though, doesn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, the team got the trophy. Oh, I see what you're saying. The team did yeah. get a trophy. Right. But that's a lot of trophy to build if you're going to do you know, it like is. the mob scene. It so, is, but that I don't think anybody stands out. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. it's the problem no. is it should have been Rizzo, and like they should have resigned yes. Rizzo. Yes, Rizzo should still be on the team right now, and he would get and a statue, would, and he would be thought of as the you know like the lasting legacy. They blew to it. that, and then he would get yes. a statue. They would absolutely blew it because he is the one that I would have picked because yeah. he was there at the beginning of the rebuild. He was there for the big time. And then he bolted, not all his fault, but yes, I absolutely, he would have been the one for me. Yeah. Cause you know, again, like if Madden had worked out and he was still around, cause I could be 10, almost 10 years later at this point, I think he would make sense. Sure. But you got an argument there. It, it's just crazy that like, that, left. you know, again, it's not going to be Kyle Hendricks, but basically that whole team is just long gone. Right. I mean, it's, it's not only, like and it's only been Miami years ago. It's not like the Florida Marlins, you know, and they were literally all there for one year. Like it, it's not that bad, but the the core was there for a little while, but not long enough for long, you know, for legendary stat. That team will always be legendary. I just don't know that anybody in particular will be. <laughs> Tommy now is coming after you. About yeah, he is. Everything that he can. When did I ever say I hate vets? I know. I mean. Yep, I hate kids. You hate I hate kids, losers. You hate pets. Who else do you you hate losers? Apparently. <laughs> I mean, I'm in education, so I don't know if I can say I hate kids, but uh <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's gonna do it for tonight. Again, we're gonna talk a little hoops on tomorrow's show. Okay. I thought that said something else, Chief. <laughs> I know. I just wow. I was like, dang, but no, he just said jaws. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, so Tommy's coming. No, we're not going to talk about that on this show, Tommy. Sorry. That's not. We're not we're not we're not going down. Oh. We're not going Yeah, down that's down. tough. That's tough. That's a that's an off uh, off the air conversation right, right there. Right. Exactly. 
All right, well, that is going to do it for tonight. Again, Tom Noy will be here tomorrow. We'll talk a little hoops. Jesse will be in after that. We'll have some rapid fire with him. I think we're all three together on Friday for the rest of the plan. Show, right? That is the plan. Yep. yep. All right. Awesome. So we got that coming up on Friday. And don't forget, Friday is a five o'clock show because some yes. people do forget about uh, yeah. that. Might have to post something on the boards to kind of remind people about that on Friday. So hit that like button. We do appreciate it. And it helps us out greatly. And of course, subscribe, rate, review, listen to your Irish Breakdown podcasts as well. Vince, I will talk to you later. We'll talk yes, to sir. everybody else tomorrow on IBD. Woo! Talk.